<laughs> hey, hey, it's crusty. Oh, man. <laughs> Take a two week break. During that silly season, you come back, you forget how to do it. The potty that's uh, take two on the intro, 2017, knock off, we're back. None of this new year, new me bullshit for these fucking knock off crew. Same old shit, son. Three of us have got <laughs> beers in hand, we're high as fuck. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's 107 in the afternoon. We ain't on, going fucking nowhere. On, on life, he means, by the way. <laughs> oh, for sure. Who hasn't? It's the festive season. I hope all Absolutely. the listeners at home had great Christmases with their nearest and dearest. Mahalo. New year, new start. Same old knockoff. Joined by regulars Danny and Chris. And uh, Simon, back from, uh, he was probably episode 12. But the uh, Decent hiatus. Definitely. Mm, I think it was six. Of, oh, I'm not too sure. Yeah, I think it was early, early, early days. Early days, yeah. But uh, yeah, you've been gallivanting around. You've been in Europe. Yeah, mate. Just I uh, was in Europe for five weeks, um, going through Austria all the way up to Finland, and then um, come back for Christmas and New Year's holiday. Wow. Yeah, man. Just a bit warmer here than uh, Finland. <laughs> <laughs> It is a bit weird. Oh, good. <laughs> it is so fucking hot right now. Absolutely. Queensland's leading the way. Apparently, it's been really, um, really hot down in Sydney. They've been pulling 37s and, and all sorts of stuff down there. Melbourne Christmas Day had 38, so I think we're just finally getting our turn now. I mean, when, d- when does the Australian Open start? Usually, that's typically a, a ridiculously hot time of year for Melbourne. They've got the Brisbane Tennis. The Brisbane International is on at the moment, so the players would be out there sweltering in that now. But uh, Australian Open, maybe the, like... 13th or something of January, so yeah, really, okay. really not far away, yeah. but um, I don't know, it seems to be, tennis these days is just the same old shit to, yeah. to me, man, it need, it's lacking characters, I mean, the, the guys that are really, really on top are elite level and some of the best players ever, but it just seems to be that you roll into Grand Slams and there's only three people who can fucking win it, realistically, yeah. you know. But hasn't that been tennis for the last however however long, bit. That's you know? fair, actually. Federer into all that. Uh, yeah, Federer the and Djokovic N- and Murray's N- Nadal now. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, old yeah, Rafa. All, always been that way. But um, fuck, hot f- mic, fly oh, on yeah. the mic, fly <laughs> on the mic. <laughs> Just got a, a yeah, yeah. fly buzzing around my face, landing on the microphone. That's, that's, that's Australia okay. for you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that's summertime yeah, special. That's it. Those international callers out there. Yeah, it has been bru- brutally stinking hot. But what are you? What have you been up to with your holidays? Chilling. I got a shitload of golf in, actually. I mm. really did, yeah. Play, played a lot of rounds, sh- shot some low numbers. So it fin- finished the year strong. 2016 was probably the most I've ever played in a calendar year. And golf gods fucking rewarded me a little bit, I think, at the end of, end of the year. Shot some good scores, had some good times. Drank plenty of piss, <laughs> but you can over a long sort of space of a golf day. So Are you allowed to take piss out with you on the golf course? At a, at a lot of places you can, yeah, yeah. You can drive mm. around with a beer in your cart, absolutely. And yeah. do, do some people, there's no obviously driving limit or anything like that to no, take not, in the Not carts in the carts, out, but or? when you get back to that parking lot, you <laughs> fucking better believe there is. Like, I've seen people drive out of golf in all sorts of fucking states before too. Okay. Have you seen the people on the course in, the, in similar sort of states? Do, do people get pretty loose on the course? Uh, depends where you play. Yeah. You, you know, okay. If you go to the little local goat goat track, yeah, there's dudes in Hawaiian shirts there, fucking torching, <laughs> torching heavies, driving, and they're the motherfuckers driving out of there too. Yeah. In their actual cars, true. You know? So that you don't see many people getting picked up from golf. Yeah. There's a lot of people rolling that dice, but um. Where is it? It's yeah. a Hayman Island or something like that. Yeah, you know, that's a, right. A yeah, Pref- sort of a high level golf place where people are golf geeks. They they just want to go and play and then probably enjoy beers after. But I'll always have a couple going around because it does act as a bit of a settler as well. But, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, Dan, you covered some ground over the break, didn't you? Yeah, a little bit of uh, northern New South Wales, uh, southeast Queensland, I suppose. But um, two national parks. One I can't pronounce the name of is uh, yeah, I won't even attempt it. But it starts with a Y. It's on the way, sort of down to Coffs Harbour, just north of Coffs. Um, but, I mean, uh, sort of, it's hard to tell sometimes when you're researching national parks and stuff because everything looks like a national park, but you have no idea how sort of much other people are using it. So when we got to that national park and camped on the beach, it was, granted, it's, you know, a day after Christmas Day, but just packed full of people, like, mm. you know, and with a two-wheel drive, there's only sort of so far that you can get away from people, but... Basically stayed there for a night and then um, and then went out to uh, Nimboy Binderay National Park, which is the Nimboidia River that's probably three hours west of Coffs. Um, so took my uh, 
shitty old 2000 Honda Civic <laughs> out on some pretty extreme roads in some extreme heat. That front wheel up. <laughs> <laughs> Dead set, like, broke down five times on the way out and uh, just had to kind of pace it where I'd worked it out that for 25 minutes of letting the engine cool, I had 45 minutes of driving. <laughs> so it made, a, it made for a, a bit of a tense sort of, like, trip getting there. Was but it cooler when you went? Uh, the roads out there were fucking insanely hot. It felt like a, a crazy heat wave. But when we f- when we finally got to Platypus Flats, which is like this uh, this other camping area that it was still crowded, but just way more sort of in in the rainforest and a bit more at ease, like just less people really, and um, and it was like considerably cooler there, especially in the mm. shade. But um, yeah, it's basically like these three big rock pools that. Um, a part of the Nimboidia River, I guess. I never even knew the Nimboidia River existed before, but it's this huge body of water and um, so many turtles and goannas and all kinds of shit out there. You can see how, like, it got its name, Platypus Platypus Flats. I think they're notoriously, like, shy animals, so Mm. I didn't see any of those. But um, it's, it's like, if you imagine what a a natural habitat for a platypus would be, it's Mm. this place. paint that picture there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. nice, nice. So it was cool, man. Just, like, read read a big chunk of my book hanging in the hammock and and going for swims. There wasn't too many walks around out there or whatever, so... Sleep in the swag? Yep, sleep in the swag. Had a little little tarp set up and a little... uh, kerosene gas uh cooker thing so um what, what you were your thoughts hot on, on swag versus tent um i'll probably probably team tent to be honest like yeah. uh just because it's it's like huge the swag itself like it's convenient to not have a mattress to have to to blow up and all that sort of stuff and you can just pop it up and it's super easy to set up but a dome is pretty easy to set up as well and it just takes up less space but um the the swag is like the proper fucking heavy heavy duty military mm. material, whereas your little dome tent from yeah. BCF or whatever, you get an ember from the from the fire or anything like that on it. It's yeah, it, it'll fuck it up. But yeah. funny you touch on the uh, the Honda Civic. There's fucking many memories in that uh, in that vehicle. Eh? Yeah, well, that's that's like a fourth fourth generation hand me down in our family. family yeah. heirloom, yeah. I, I can remember yeah. dr- driving that thing with at oh no, maybe that was the car. Before that, yeah, would have been mum, mum's mum's old Toyota <laughs> Corolla. Um, drunk one night at sort of you know like not <laughs> drunk, but you know like I was going to say before we get into giving the proper history of this car, <laughs> these cars, we should probably throw out some allegedly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> D- discla- disclaimer: at like about fifteen, had a had a mate from up the road over, and we decided to take mum's car out. Took it out, took it for a drive with the handbrake on, then returned it back to the garage where it just proceeded to. Stink to high heaven of just burnt rubber, obviously because it'd just been driven around with the handbrake on for yeah, ten minutes, no. and um, doused the the axles of this thing in uh, in deodorant and all sorts of shit, and just tried to air out the garage because mum and dad came home from dinner about an hour later. Oh, <laughs> no, we had done the same sort of thing in the uh, in the Civic. There was a party, well, oh, not, maybe not even a party. I think we might have just had some drinks and thought, oh, we're gonna take the car for a drive. Cruising around the streets of, of Petrie, drove past like unlicensed, mind you. We had problems getting the handbrake off yeah, as well. Yeah, We're yeah, on the front yeah, board, yeah. put it in D with the handbrake on, like, rrr, like, man, why aren't we going anywhere? Do a full burnout yeah. on the front lawn. Yeah, <laughs> ma- massive burnout. End up driving past this house party, like, yo, what's up, ladies? This chick just comes in and just king hits Danny, like, through the uh, through really? the driver's side window. Oh, yeah, I we just gun, that. gun it away. North Brisbane for you. Pull, pull over. <laughs> Go, going around the corner, there's uh, some poor kids got his push bike left on the front lawn at night time. We're like, yoink, we'll, we'll take that. Put it in the boot of the car. <laughs> drive home. It's up to pull, no, pull up into, to no yeah, good. Yeah, out on bail, fresh out of jail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just there, go back to the, um, get back into the driveway at the home. We're like, man, that was real shitty taking that bike out. <laughs> Let, yeah, let's drop it back and fucking drive back down down the street, fucking took it back, just left it there. Like, yeah, no, that's the right thing to do. Oh, Never mind you were driving pissed. Like, oh, okay. man. It's so silly. Mate, it's so funny how it, you absolutely have no, no clue with any of that yeah, stuff. Like, that that would have been 14 or 15 mm. years old. 
Around re- the same sort of vintage, I can remember likewise taking dad's car off the driveway and, and it was literally because I wanted to because I wanted to drive away with it, but I didn't want them to obviously hear the the sound of the ignition <laughs> fi- firing up being on the driveway and shit. So I've just pretty much like dropped it into uh, dropped this car into uh, dad's company car, mind you, into into neutral <laughs> to, to, to to back it down the driveway so that I could then like from being out on the road fire it up and drive it off. But obviously, when you, as anyone will know that, you know, when you try and steer a car that the ignition is not on, the steering wheel will lock at, at a certain point. So, I've, I've pretty much, like, tried to start steering it down the driveway and the, and the steering wheel's locked into place. And your brakes don't work either. Like, your brakes sort of, like, will lock up yep. as well. So, you've got to sort of, like, really clamp down hard on the brakes just to come to a slow stop. So, I'm sort of, like, reversing with, you know, reversing down the driveway, heading straight over towards like the sort of the next door neighbor's house sort of ended up stopping in the middle of this street and we lived on a street that wasn't busy anyway but my just my luck someone sort of come along and meanwhile i've got dad's car parked you know parallel across the street just like didn't know how to and from that point because you know how you need to turn your wheel down to actually turn your ignition (laughs) to get the car to start wouldn't start because it it was always obviously locked on Fortunately, this person got out of their car and I was like, mate, I'm just having car trouble. The car won't start. And he sort of got in, turned the handle and sort of fired it up through a bit of a, a wayward look and then it was, just went on his way, you know. Just mate, an how old are you? just help you steal, <laughs> yeah, steal a car. Yeah, yeah. He gets, he gets some a couple tw- of years. <laughs> some 12-year-old hits you up in the middle of the street yeah, one day. Yeah, man, yeah. I, it's just locked up on me. Yeah, like, car troubles, man. You're like, yeah, I'm going to have... bring this full circle. Yeah. Here you go, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, kid see ya. this kid doesn't even have pubes yet, but I'll start it up. Or even fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> all right, mate. You're all good to go. <laughs> Give him hell. Oh. Yeah. This deadly weapon is, is, a, <laughs> yeah. is already here to drive, my friend. Get stuck into it. Oh, the shit you do when you're young. Though. That's it. But even back to what you were saying before, I was remembering about um, tents. Like if you, you know, if it is hot and, and it has been bloody hot in, in this sort of area lately, um, camping is the pits like i can remember when we went um when we went camping early days and we would just as a stitch up we would stand at the door to each other's tents and just cricket bat onions into people's tents like so throw up an onion and then just hit it with a cricket bat so it would just (laughs) disintegrate inside people's tents no wonder camping sucks with your (laughs) friends it was the pit (laughs) camping's fucking shit man (laughs) and the, the following day you'd wake up just brutally hung over and it'd already be about 35 in your tent, but it just stunk like fucking cooked onion, you know? <laughs> it was terrible. Shocking. Yeah, I can remember <laughs> one, like, similar-sounding, like, high school camp trip where we just collectively decided to, to make one of our mates tent the bin, basically. <laughs> like, so you just throw all your rubbish in his tent. And we were giving him shit that he didn't buy an actual real tent. He just had, like, one of those sunshade, like, <laughs> beach things or whatever, so... Oh, you got a fuckload of the, sand. The in hilarity shit as well. that you get from from temporary structures and temporary things like camping and stuff like that is gold, though, because you really you're rel- so reliant on your own, not ingenuity, obviously, because all all the stuff's pre, you know, pre done, and you just got to take it with you and get set up and stuff like that. But just the hilarious shit that that ends up happening. All these yeah. camping trips and stuff. Now, this is what someone like Ronda Rousey can do in her free time. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, boys. Yeah. UFC <laughs> two hundred seven. That. Uh, that main event, you, Dana always talks about those oh shit moments in when you're watching the UFC and they pride themselves on that. Probably wasn't the result that Dan, Uncle Dana and no. the fucking new crew were after, but that was an oh shit moment right there. That was should we should we pull back and go fucking all the fights on this card because right there yeah. was some build, fucking build up. it was it was a fun yeah. it was a fun card it was man yeah. that uh, that Smolka v Borg did you watch that. Yes, it was fucking. Is. Talk about a busy game of of grappling, man. Crazy those, transitions. The, some of those uh, transitions, those dudes looked amazing. I had uh, I had Smolker in that, but uh, yeah, yeah, that Borg, Borg, just Borg broke his ankle in that. Did like, he really? At the Ooh. end of the um, at the end of the second, he said to his corner that like my ankle's broken, and they were like, oh fuck, well. And then he came out in the end of the third, and he was just like jumping around on it, just. Tough as fuck. Like, didn't look like it was affecting him at we've all. Seen, we've seen some horrific UFC-related injuries that that dudes have fought through. You know that that Jamie, Jamie Varner broken foot one where he fought. I think it 
might have been Edson Barboza or someone like that, you know, was was just terrific. That that broken arm that Rich Franklin sustained from that body kick mm. against Chuck Liddell. I mean, if if and and I think Rich has even been quoted as saying it. But if he if he didn't land that uh, that overhand right or whatever, he hit Chuck will, within the yeah, next shot and sort of out. put him out cold. Like that that fight would have been over it because be you know like, it would have been Chucks. You know, this, um, out of the weekend too. Shout out to uh, our our boy Johnny Hendricks too. An- another uh, another fight, another missed weight cut, another yep. L. Yeah. So yep. what happens? This guy's man? hanging by a thread, man. Is he? It's as unprofessional as it gets. Not making weight. And for a guy who was what a... What did he weigh in at? 173 and a half. half. He needed to make oh, 171. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, he so, should, t- so two and a half pounds. Like, it's not like he even got close. Like, that's that's a fair bit what we're talking about. That's he, like a good 800 grams it's or something. At least in my opinion anyway, he, sh- he should have won that fight. I, I felt as though his, his grappling and, and his octagon control was probably enough. But just those those submissions that N- mm. Magni sort of... He had him deep in those triangles sort of late in the... I think it's the, the first, first and the, and the third. 30, yeah, yeah, exactly. And... And got him with some elbows and, and got some ground and pound in. But I still think Hendricks probably deserved to take that win. But yep. agreed with you. There's there's a deep problem of him making weight there somewhere. And and Usada, you know, speculation aside, he, he definitely doesn't look like the fight, fighter he formerly was. It was uh, straight up alarm bells for me when the commentators mentioned that Hendricks was quoted before his last fight coming in. He was training four times a week, once a day before mm-hmm. his last fight. And apparently he got back to like training super hard this time around and and did just come up short but Neil Magny's ranked 8th now. So how do you, how do you market Johnny Hendricks to someone else at 70? He's just become well and truly gatekeeper status and yeah. I don't think he can go to 185 pounds and have success like someone like yeah. Kelvin Gaslam. I, I don't was, think um, he can do it. It was well interesting that interview that went around that that you sent to me earlier in the week Matty was um I think it was I think it was Ariel, but there was a few other guys yeah. quizzing him as well, and uh, he was visibly affected by his weight cut. He was you know having trouble standing upright. He was obviously like really sunken in in the face and slurring some of his words and sort of like confusing his speech a fair bit. But I mean, yeah, I, I like you you watch that though, and you do have to empathize with the fighter a little bit, like to to think you know. He's fucking battling to to make this weight, and uh, and he's going into a fight where everybody is asking him, "Is this like asking about mm-hmm. retirement and shit before his fight?" Like, so yeah, Johnny yeah. Hendricks is is in that weird zone. Like, and 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 it's crazy in this sport where you see somebody who's such a dominant fucking force and and becomes champion. Like, remember when he was just starching dudes, man? Like. Mm. Fucking campman and stuff like Fitch, that. Those just cr- skidded crazy Fitch. No one, fucking Fitch had a chin at that point too. Mm. No one had stopped Fitch by that point. Just skidded and, him across the and cage. And GSP and, and Condit and all that stuff to now sort of like you're saying, just, just holding that mid position and having to field all those questions and shit like that. I, I feel for the dude, man. I feel for him. I, I didn't actually catch the prelims, but... Um, it looks like there were some decent decent fights on the prelims. Most definitely was. Uh, Brandon no, Thatch, another loss. He's been four four fights for Brandon Thatch, four losses by yeah, choked each true. time. Just yeah. doesn't ha- doesn't have the ground. And apparently, he's a guy who's a a gym killer, like on the feet in the gym, just lighting people up, and has got a really good reputation. But come to fight night, there's just holes in that ground game. Yeah. Um, Mike Pyle, poor old Quicksand, got. Knocked the fuck out on yeah. that prelim. Oh, fight. Alex Garcia Cold. looks like yeah. a fucking oh. animal. Cold. He's like a little Hector Lombard sort of yeah. build on him. That Alex yeah. Garcia and poor old Mike Pyle at thirty-eight years old was on the end of a uh, devilish this, right. But hand. was that at one forty-five? I think. I think one seventy. Uh, no, yeah, one seventy. Yeah, yeah one seventy. Yeah. Mike Pyle's a one seventy. Yep. But um, I, th- I think prior to that though, Mike Mike Pyle had strung a few wins together. Th- mm. Though well, you he know, definitely like, went he's, on a little run. He's definitely a journeyman. Uh, he's he's sort of always been a, a a top sort of I guess oh, top twenty guy in the in the UFC's welterweight division. Anyway, you know, he's sort of always been in there and always been a really tough guy. But um, he's always been a mainstay. That's for sure. Yeah, apparently, but, one um, of those guys that excels in the gym a hell of a lot too. Mike Pyle. Yeah, when there's true. no pressure on, he would just fuck people up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I bet he'd be a, he'd be a tough dude. That's for sure. Yeah. But um. But yeah, honestly, that small fight was one of the most exciting 125 fights I've seen in a while, man. Really? Oh, they can get some dude. fucking. There was I, a lot of ground it. scrambling on that, man. Yeah, yeah I suppose. I yeah. enjoyed the yeah. fuck out of that fight. Yeah. yeah, no, it was all right. It was it was, it was um, pretty good. 
didn't hold a candle to the co-main. That was that was my main event, really. Anyway, I thought Ronda could well and truly have been in the co-main event status mm. on that card. Or even even and TJ TJ and bloody um, that, oh yeah for sure yeah TJ looked fantastic against, against John, John Lineker. Lineker. Yeah, yeah, he, exactly. Lineker's a guy with with one punch power, and TJ was able to bait him in and land, and just some of the double legs that he timed as well to take Lineker down. Definitely, He's well and truly earned his title shot. Now I think. He missed the boat like a motherfucker, and we I think we commented to each other at the time. I thought he missed the boat big time by only mentioning Dom Cruz in his post fight totally. speech. He mm. thought Cruz had that fight. He well said he said that in his um, post fight did, interview yeah. as well. That's it. And so he was like, "Oh, I was hedging my bets." There was a few weird sort of mm. ca- call out moments, like uh, Cody. You just won the title, and he and he calls out TJ. Yeah, I, I really of, liked that though. I thought I thought yeah. that was great because TJ is next. But then you like, notice in the press in the post fight. Press conference, Cody's saying it, it should be a, a rematch. I think, yeah, that I, I did see that too. So, so. it's sort of, yeah, it's like, yeah, I, I, I tend to think as, as the champion, you take the option of sit back and see what business opportunities mm. come your way or have it worked mm. out prior, like McGregor spec, where yeah. you know you've, you've got Already an option A and an people. option B, yeah. like depending on who's Th- winning. That, that's what I was just about to ask. Do you think that you would go in with, I mean, even though obviously you're mentally preparing for a fight and, and to, to perform to the best of your ability there, do you think that you would go in with a, if you win, if you lose, this is what you got to say, you know? When you're I in th- top tier, maybe, like, I think... You, you know, probably. you know what I reckon we're seeing, man, and it's like it's evident in stuff as simple as all the fighters wear suits to the post-fight press conferences mm. and shit now, and and like, you know, as much as you can say that Conor McGregor is not the first shit talker to come along, or you know, Floyd Mayweather's done this and he's he's following in other people's footsteps, he's kind of revolutionised the game a fair bit in terms of that calling people out creating your own business strategies and and having shit worked out in advance like McGregor would be sitting there with a plan of okay if this person beats this person I've got these options within this division or this this option here and there and you know depending on what goes on like tonight like say you know I know that these two contenders are fighting on the same card I've got a plan for my post fight speech should person A versus person B win. Like, he would have that shit worked out. And if he didn't, he would know enough to be like, okay, I'm not going to call anybody out on the mic. I'm going to sit back bec- and, and let some options be created and shit like that. And I think other fighters are clu- cluing into that where initially they were sort of just like, oh, it's just a guy that talks shit and he gets fights because he talks shit. It's like, no, it's actually a fucking, it's a sound marketing strategy is what it is. And he's, he's bringing that real sort of savvy business mentality to the fight game that... Up until now, we haven't seen that much of in MMA. It's it's mm. been way more like you know you see the huge names in boxing and stuff that can dictate terms a little bit, and it's it's only now that we're seeing you know the likes of fucking Ronda Rousey didn't do any press for this and mm. got got it got away with it scot free because she's the fucking million dollar woman, you know. And, I mean? and well, especially it's like the guys <laughs> like still yeah, a millionaire. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, she, <laughs> she's cruising now. But touch touch on the, on the that co-main five entertaining rounds. Cody, you see in MMA time at times where Young, hungry guys rise to the occasion. John Jones comes out, beats Shogun. T- young, yeah, Dillashaw champ. against Rennan in the first D- time. Dillashaw did it against Barrow. Connor did it against Jose. And then now Cody's done it to yeah. Dom, This is Dom's first loss in a, in a decade. Mm. Granted, he did lose a little bit of time, but he still came out and he was beating the best guys. Yeah. I'd 100% pay for a re- like to watch a rematch if those guys were to go it again. I thought it was thoroughly entertaining. What's, your, I think what's Cody, your take on... Cody talks shit a lot out there. He did, he did. And he looked Dom off. He looked fucking slick, man. There's mm-hmm. like, there's no two ways about it. But what what are your thoughts of the, you know, because I watched the post-fight press conference and uh, and Cruz said, you know, no no way was he injured. He was 100% fit for the fight. And, uh, and TJ actually made the point, and I tend to agree with him, that Dom didn't really look himself. He looked stiffer than... Than he usually does. He doesn't. He didn't look as loose. Do you chalk that up to just the how slick Cody was that made him look like that, or do you feel like it wasn't it wasn't the Dom of old that we've necessarily um, seen? You can see guys age overnight. I thought mm. in Faber's late in Faber's career, I thought he aged overnight. Granted, he won impressively he against Pickett, the other but week, yeah. you see him. You see these guys do age, and Dom. Meant touched on at the post fight presser at how well Cody. 
controlled the range mm. in that fight, and, and which he did too. If Dom, Dom would throw a leg kick, he'd catch it. Cody, big counter right hand. Like, and Cody backs his power. Like, we saw him drop him three times in that round. Yeah. Uh, on round three or four. Oh, there were, was, there were a lot of oh shit moments in that fight where you time. thought, fuck, Cruz is getting put away here. Yeah, def- there was times. And Brad touched on it when we were watching the fight as well. And he dropped him with that first one and then showboated. And like, thought, fuck, he, yeah. could, he could jump on him here and pour it on him. Granted, it is only sort of a split second moment, but. He just didn't uh, – Cody backed his – believed in himself and backed his power and it seemed to – I think some of the shit talking seemed to get to Dom as well. I think yeah. Dom fought maybe more emotionally than he would. I thought uh, Dom would have gone to his wrestling a hell of a lot more than he did, but he didn't uh, – I think he might have got caught up in the moment of this – of trying to fucking knock him out maybe. Mm. And he seemed to really struggle to, to land those takedowns too. Like he, he, he obviously – or I should say to hold those takedowns mm. down because he did land a couple – that there were beautiful timing and all that sort of stuff. But, um, man, Cody, full package, you know. Like, I mean, just showed every single, you know, facet of that game apart from really jiu-jitsu, which we didn't see much of. Mm. But, you know, like really from footwork to head movement to, you know, like, I mean, to striking, counter-striking, chin. you know, chin, yep. like just looked outstanding. I you thought know? there was one, it was like, uh, it was either towards the end of the first or sometime in the second when Cruz clipped Cody fucking good and proper and got his attention with like a, a swinging right or something like that and pretty much went missing for that solid solid second round Cody but then and you thought you thought he might be fucking turning the tables at that point Cruz mm-hmm. but um but they just dominant fucking performance in the end yeah. it was it was a UD unanimous was, decision right was, yeah. yeah unanimous yeah. decision and what uh just all round good guy too. It seems Cody Garbrandt. What Doesn't he did, he for, what he did for that young uh, young cancer survivor. Yeah, look you know he he'd, he'd met he'd met like for those casual fans that weren't watching. Cody met a, a five year old kid a couple of years ago in his in his own hometown that was battling leukemia and just happened to be a huge MMA fan. So he's kept in contact with this kid and his family regularly visits him. And he Cody's MMA debut. He's like, you can come and walk out with me, or you you can come to the fight, something along those lines. And he said, look. You can come to the fights again when I make that title fight war. And in the space of 12 months, Cody went from unranked to a title fight and walked mm. out with a young fella in, in his... Imagine yeah. that being 25 years old, walking out for the biggest moment of your career. Holding and you're hands that, you're with that a, selfless with fight, that you're letting yeah. the young fella enjoy his <coughs> like, the best moment of Absolutely, his life. Absolutely, man. So you sh- they're sharing it together. He does treat him like a little brother and... The second that Cody got the belt, he went and put it on the on the kid. Like, yeah, that's yeah. Just, he, he was does, a touching moment that's for like, sure. Goosebumps now, even saying that back, and at the time, it's like, wow, you, you can't mm. beat that in sport sometimes. Yeah, definitely. And it, <laughs> I thought it was funny. I remarked like, you know, anybody that he had offside with his, I've never had to chase pussy in my life. I'm not about to start now, bro. He he fucking probably he, pr- he probably won him back over with the. Uh, <laughs> With the gesture of kindness. Yeah. His girlfriend's listening to that interview. He's going, he's fucking <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I, wonder if you, I wonder if you have to, I guess, you know, a P, PC the amount of stuff that you get up to if you've got a missus. Like when you're out on those, um, you know, P, Metro PCS bloody pool parties in Vegas and all that sort of jazz. Like, I was actually talking to, about this the other day. <clears throat> yeah. I was talking about this the other day and like the difference between like – because somebody asked me, do you think that Kanye West and Kim Kardashian would basically just have like an understanding where he was going to fuck all the bad bitches he wanted mm. and she she would be able to suck off whatever basketball players came around and shit. And uh, I tend to not agree, like when it comes to um, people that are of an equal probably celebrity or yeah. e- oh, ego yeah. status. Like I don't think, you know, Kim... Kim would condone like, oh, well, he's he's Kanye West. He can do whatever he wants, like because no. her ego is so big. Exactly. Whereas, like, and this is a fucking huge, <laughs> huge allegedly, but like, whereas if you're, you know, for example, Hugh uh, Jackman's missus. like <laughs> J- J- John, J- yeah, Hugh Jackman and, John and John. dog fucking ugly. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> Shout out you. We love you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like if, if somebody's like was with you prior to your celebrity status, like then there might be a little bit more leniency in terms of you know where your be- bread's buttered. Like if, mm. if he goes out and lets off some steam and turns out that he, you know, spent the night with a playmate or something like that, they might be more inclined not to call the marriage you'd, off. You'd have, to, you'd have to have a, an extremely tough resolve to be the partner and still go push ahead with that. You well, know? that's what I wonder, because like, you know, with, with Connor, man. Like, so, and sorry to cut you off, but, like, 
I see his Instagram all the time where these young, like, Instagram models that are basically just famous for how fucking good an ass they mm. have and, the, and their page is just, like, all of these amazing shots of them in all, all sorts of swimwear. And, um, and like, they'll be commenting so on... Heard. They'll, they'll <laughs> be commenting on Con- Connor's photos, like beast with like love hard eyes and like all yeah. this sort of stuff you know just just constantly like Fucking you you looking at this shit. and that's just <laughs> exactly and that's just the wall imagine what his dm would look like and, and imagine oh imagine what's it what it's like going to the ivy nightclub in in fucking yeah. vegas after a win yeah. like yeah. It, it must you're right you must just have to have absolute iron, iron resolve yeah. where you you know that okay. What's better f- better for me emotionally and psychologically is somebody who's mm. been there with me before all this shit versus this insanely hot chick with a fake ass that's mm. like come now that the status has come. You yeah, know? But exactly. It would 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 be very very tricky for more so uh, for everybody I suppose, but for males in general, simply because of your. The, bo- the the DNA that you're struggling with in terms of that whole sowing your seed arrangement, but yeah, the dick brain is a yeah, is a real di- thing. Yeah, for absolutely. Sure. But wouldn't wouldn't absolutely in no uncertain circumstances it'd definitely be controllable. You know, like it, it, it's for all the you know the evolutionary sort of you know excuses you want to chuck on it. You know, everyone still has that ability to be able to turn down pussy at the end of the day. I, I think. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Unless you're. Uh, that security guard fucking watch, <laughs> watching the chill. <laughs> he wouldn't turn down shit. We broke that down in the that's Christmas right, special. That's but it was, right. Uh, yeah, exactly. Knuckles up. Knuckle, just knuckles himself. up just shredding himself. Yeah. I, re- I really liked how he didn't he didn't maintain a, a steady technique either. So <laughs> no. de- uh, just that, erratic yeah, fucking. If I, if, I, if I really go with an erratic fucking rhythm here, then maybe no one will notice that I'm, I'm actually I'm jerking Scratching up. myself. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Did you see that, yeah. Simon? It was uh, a video getting around on the um, on Instagram where this uh, security guard at a at a baseball or a, like college NFL game in the states was um you know how they basically have their back to the game and they're supposed to watch the crowd for any shit that's going on yeah he's nineteen if he's lucky and he's literally within two arms length of one of the team's cheerleaders team and uh, they're doing their routine or whatever and he's I don't know if he's just grabbing it through the pocket or if he's got a hole in the pocket but like knuckles up like this just like jacking himself off like so blatantly in his in his sweatpants and, and like somebody in the audience is just camera phoning the fuck out of this and dude he's just got it strapped full sideward around his hips sort of thing <laughs> like and he's just jacking it from inside was of there his some pocket. sort of follow up where it was like he lo- he lost his job he did, or yeah yeah it was he was identified and they lost his right. job I don't, I don't think they were going to charge him with anything yeah, it's just what the, could the, pub, the public embarrassment yeah. is well you haven't indecently or... exposed yourself or anything like that you're mainly just jacking it in your pants yeah. in a public Place, which is indecent as shit. It would yeah. be considered probably some be sort of indecent if that was your, yeah. if that something. Was your daughter standing in yeah. front of him or something. You might be like, let's fucking charge. There'd be some story. like disorderly conduct charge or something. Have like you that. ever, just, um, have you, you ever, you a, <coughs> have you ever seen, seen that? Um, I think it's like an NBC show where it's like how to catch a predator and they yeah, and they up. like do the setups of um, they'll get like on old school AOL days. I'm pretty sure they're like, I don't know if they still make the episodes now, but back in the day, they would get. Um, like police gimmies to um, jump on the uh, like AOL chats and shit like that and act as like a 14 year old girl and say that you're horny or whatever and come around and then uh, and then they would basically have not only the cops and everything there but a full basically like 60 minutes crew <laughs> to be the first one to intercept this person so it wasn't like you were just getting busted it was like legit you were getting interviewed the second that you walked in by this guy that's yeah. like what were you doing online chatting to uh, <laughs> chatting on, to young seat. girls? Have a like, seat, yeah. and, the fu- and the funny thing is about it, like, psychologically, is a lot of the dudes start answering his questions yeah. and start, like, divulging information about why they, yep. you know... Going full Dr. Phil on the couch yeah. with it. Like, as yeah. if they're, like, getting cancelled. All on record. All on record, <laughs> yeah, too. Just yeah. like, oh, all right. No, cool. fuckhead. Yeah. Ask for your lawyer yeah. and shut up. <laughs> 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 oh. Uh, no, I'll tell you another good show that I was only actually watching the other night is that um, – oh, have you seen like that that show on Foxtel called like What the Hell? And it's like a, a, a whole bunch of um, Google Earth images that obviously when the satellite circumvents sort of like Earth and takes all the, the Google Earth images – Circumnavigate. Whatever, circumnavigate, sorry. Um, uh, circumnavigates the Earth and takes all the topographical shots of sort of, you know, of the lay of land and all that sort of stuff. 
obviously it picks up a whole number of, of topographical imagery which, you know, n- needs to be blurred out for national security purposes and stuff like that. Like Area 57 and stuff like that, the government will come across and, and blur out sections that you can't see, you know, when you do that. But then there's other stuff on there which... The, the satellite cameras have picked up, which they can't explain, you know, like whether it's like those, there's all these dots that pretty much like make out the lay of the land in between sort of like Mozambique and all the way down to South Africa, like which extend 180 something kilometres. But also I was watching this one the other day about a um, an island off sort of like out towards New Caledonia but up towards Fiji and sort of, you know, that sort of region or whatever that they uh, picked up on a on a Google Earth image, super, super remote. Um, this island sort of like the the size of um, of Manhattan in, in the States and uh, and then there's this big black blob like on, on the sort of on the image and they, they couldn't, f- couldn't figure out what it was. So they ended up chartering a, bo- a boat to, to go out to this island like two, two or three days or something it t- takes to get out there. And the island is now absolutely missing. Like so it, it is 100% at one stage like, you know, even when Captain Cook drew up maps and, and everybody sort of, you know, put together a map, it was at one stage this island which was remote as fuck like out there that was about the size of Manhattan that was you know far too far above sea level to you know to ever shrink into the ocean or whatever and so they had all these these different sort of takes on it as to maybe some crazy volcanic activity happened underneath the ocean and it sort of dropped that section of the the island or whatever and um and they went over it and, and even sort of GPS sounded the the depth of it and all that sort of stuff and it just it's just gone it's just vanished you know, so something that they pr- conclusively proved was a ge- geological structure uh, at some stage within the last sort of, you know, 50 to 100 years or whatever is just now completely disappeared. Crazy. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's a UFO, good show. Sorry, um, the other day. Really? Pretty really? Le- pretty legit. I've had a, I've had a couple of, um, and like when I say UFO, that it's an unidentified flying object yeah, where you it. can't identify it as a plane. Um, necessarily a satellite or anything. So I was out at Platypus Flats and it's, as you can imagine, fucking way out of any kind of built-up area, no light pollution whatsoever. So you can see shitloads of stars. And um, saw a couple of shooting stars. Um, This thing was moving like probably at the same pace as a plane initially, but no, it was super far away. Like you could see it was really, really fucking high up. And um, no... No distinct sort of... You know how you can see the the blue and red lights, I think it is, on a plane's wings or or green and red or whatever it is? Um, Couldn't see any of that and it was basically like moving in a straight straight sort of line as a plane would across the sky. Then all of a sudden has basically taken a turn but turning sort of to the side and up and then it just kept on going further and further up until it was basically like it was going up and away. So it was like no way was that a fucking plane because it was like so far up and just took this really random turn and then basically just vanished but mm. watched it for a good sort of 20 seconds and um yeah like don't know what the fuck it was man yeah, C- cannot cannot shit. explain that satellite maybe I don't drone know. Yeah. Could, could, could have been a satellite but yeah I don't, I don't know how satellites move yeah it could have been a drone, drone. but yeah. um what, that's insane what becomes of all those people that have all that sort of you know that area 57 knowledge and all that sort of stuff you know do they just obviously honor that you know the honor that commitment so you know so heavily that they end up taking it to the grave with them every single one of them or is it just a case of that they target only those people or who knows there's, 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 there's stuff you can find online about um uh different people that have been in the know at one point or another and, and sharing information that they've had, but the, the those organisations do a pretty good job of, of yeah. discrediting those people yeah. and saying they were disgruntled or whatever. So I think it, it's an interesting, interesting concept, you're right, because some people would have to surely be... Um, included in on that information as the generation ages I mean. like you know you, you new graduates eventually will have to learn that information or learn the policy or or maybe they're mm-hmm. just like 
This gets swallowed up here. It doesn't go any further. We bury this mm. fucking... Nobody nobody coming along needs to know or... Well, that's what knows, I mean. is like Because uh, effectively, you know, once you expose someone to one event and it's just one person, that's one person. But then they tell someone else about it, then it's two people. And then you've got to worry about those two people telling someone. So if you think of something that... And, and obviously, fair enough, if you're up in the, C, if you're in the CIA or, or one of these organisations, obviously, you're pretty good at, you know, keeping a lid on things and you understand the, the severity of your job and the information that you get. But over the years, since, like, all these events have happened, there'd be probably tens of thousands of people that, that would have gone through those, you know, those government agencies and, and we'd be privy to that, that extremely confidential information. And then that tens and thousands... Uh, you know, are then obviously available to tell another tens of thousands. Mm. Like, it just... It, it surprises me how that information doesn't get out. I think that people, if they did disclose information, all of a sudden would just go missing. Yeah, as well. They'd exactly. They'd be like, nah, yeah. open your yeah. mouth, you, you're off. Yeah, I think exactly. It, and they, I think those people would probably know that as well. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm keeping this sealed here. Shot, this was, shot six times in the back yeah. of the head during that's a right, hunting yeah. accident. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> oh, his car got found on the edge of the cliff mm. or... Yeah, Things exactly. like that. It's yeah. fucking wild. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, that, that fucking level of information is fucking crazy that there's, you know, people out there that biologically, psychologically, they're no different to the four people sitting around this mm. table, but they just have this exactly. access to or, you know, responsibility to some fucking insane mm. information because 100% there is some some crazy shit classified about extraterrestrials and all, all sorts of shit that basically the masses are like, no, nah, do extraterrestrials really exist? I don't mm. know. I don't know. And, and fucking for sure there would be information about, you know, what, what contact that we've had and mm. fucking for, sh- for sure there has to have been, man. Like it just, it, it doesn't make any sense when you think about the size of, you know, the, the fucking universe that exists within so many other fucking galaxies and universes or whatever it is. Like, obviously, yeah, way, way too intelligent a, a subject for fucking the may- knockoff. May- but Maybe we just get to a stage where we're... People are informed enough to the point where they they give up give people more credit than to to feel, feel as though they need to hide the information and and feel as though that they can the public can at some stage handle it, you know because I think that's the only stage that we're going to end up getting getting any of this information out is that I, do, I don't feel as though it's going to be some fucking kick open the closet door by you know by the government and say hey listen here's what we've been hiding you fr- from you for all these years but I think it'll be an event that happens that they're like oh, well we've been looking for you know something to to finally you know push this out into the into the public spotlight so fuck it let, let that one hit the media and then and it's like hey we found this that's crashed in this and yes we are pr- you know validating that we don't know what that is and and then all of a sudden it becomes real from that moment on mm-hmm. you know and that mm-hmm. Uh, it's been said a number of times, but single-handedly is is effectively the greatest in well, not it, greatest discovery in Australia. Oh, in, we've, in we've uh, said it on we said we it. Know yeah, about. I think we said it on one of the underground episodes that it would be the biggest news story of all time. Of all time. Of all time. Absolutely. Like of all human knowledge, it would be nothing nothing bigger. Yeah, you turn on CNN tonight, and someone in fucking Arkansas or whatever has. Has had a flying disc land in their backyard, and the government have gone out there and gone, "Yep, yeah, we'll admit to the media that we don't know what the fuck this thing is either." Text running along the bottom of the screen, like Ali- confirmed, yes. aliens, aliens exist. Can you shit. imagine? Right. Mm. And there will be there will be a day. There will be a day where we're sitting around and you're watching that text fly across the bottom of the screen. If we're yeah. wa- if it is Ma- a screen. maybe in our lifetime, maybe yeah. not. Mm. That yeah. edible's starting to do work. <laughs> 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 A knock on the door. Yeah, the, the, these two buddies of ours I, I, over the Christmas break were like, had a piss up on um, Boxing Day and were sitting around hung over the, the following day. Fucking impulsive fucking blokes that these are. Let's go buy drone copters. And f- both each, yeah, each went to, each went to buy a drone. Story. And um, two drones went down to the park just uh, like in their, in their suburb where they live, just went down the street like, righto, let's, let's fly these bitches. <laughs> fucking one bloke gets his stuck at the top of a power pole, like an inside twenty seconds. First, first yeah. ascension, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, like, first one, like ready, uh, here we go. Whoa! Uh, oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, shit, in a power pole. And what happened? Yeah. What happened to uh, the, the, the second? The second bloke, he's just pretty much like fang his straight up to the point where like it's hit it hit, hit a wind pocket at about a hundred <laughs> meters up, and he reckons that he's just watched it, and then all of a sudden he's just watched it. 
jet sideways, like at about probably like Mach 10 speed, like, and then within about a you know, split second or whatever, it's just hundreds of metres down to the point where you can barely even see it anymore. <laughs> and then so they, his pretty much plan was to pretty much just c- cut the power to the remote because then it just drops out of the sky like um and then comes all the way down and he was going to fire it up again like mid-drop so that it sort of could, could, could oh, keep God. going up or whatever but brand new lucky it. has that control <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. well that's oh. what i said i'm, I'm gonna th- let it drop clutch start this loopy bitch. Loop it. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. well that, that's what i was laughing at is because this this thing that oh, i guess the the version that he bought or whatever can go up to 400 meters high and it'd weigh a couple of kilos. No, what, whatever it is, it'd weigh a couple of kilos. Land on someone's bonnet. It's, oh, uh, you're going to know about it. Land on someone's fucking head. Yeah, that's true. Mate, imagine being hit by a fucking d- d- drone literally falling out from 400 yeah. metres out of the sky. You'd be filthy at that. Oh. You'd, you'd be dead. dead. You'd be dead. You'd be dead, bro. You wouldn't be filthy, be filthy, filthy at all. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be Your cool as fuck. Well. Like, <laughs> you'd fucking roll up to that dude's chair, uh, house in your wheelchair and you'd give him a spray, man. Yeah. Well, there's lots of um, there's lots of laws and stuff being introduced. I think now about mm. like being able to fly over yeah. other people's um, property and shit because like that. Because dickheads lo- like these two, low, yeah. Lo- lo- <laughs> lo- low well, for the da- for the for the like aerodynamic a- a danger of it as well. But um, but yeah, also like the privacy concerns yeah, and shit. You can yeah. basically sp- spy on people's well, I don't, I don't, shit. Someone will probably correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they figured out that whole. Like low airspace sort of area. Like I think that that the upper airspace area is very controlled. Like yeah. they know what's there. They know sort of where that's going. It's all GPS marked and this, that, and the other thing. It's very heavily regulated. But the section between sort of, oops, nearly dropped the mic. Um, between the you know the gr- the ground effectively and sort of however many feet that is between the you know the proper airspace is. Fuck all regulation around mm. it. And mm. how far she can go in between that as well yeah. because the speed is everything when it comes to drones and stuff. Mm. Like delivering packages, they really want to do that with Amazon. That's and, right. Um, yeah, I saw that. Same same sort of concept. You've got like five kilos in the air or ten mm. kilos depending on it. Like where's the point where it's like, well, if this things fail, exactly lands yeah. on someone like... Yeah, who's where, responsible. Yeah, where, yeah. Where's Amazon the reliability the in it? Yeah. Sort of stuff. Well, it's like, the same sort of thing. It, like in, I work in the construction industry and we have to... Whenever you're doing a crane lift, you know, you have to have what's called an exclusion zone, which is pretty much underneath the... The, p- the weight that's being lifted or whatever, you have to have, you know, an excluded area that people can't walk underneath for that very reason. Because, you know, like if you're lifting a s- cage of fucking scaffold or whatever it is across the thing, you know, you don't want it to s- a chain to snap and then a cage of scaffold to come down and hit someone, you know? So Yeah, I think it's like it's kind of seems as though it's inevitable that we're going to move more and more into this automatic automated like transport space yeah. where, you know... There are unmanned things flying around the sky and people people in driverless cars and all yeah. that sort of stuff. And I think once they nut it all out, it'll probably be a safer thing, I would think. But yeah. If you look at the, mile, <coughs> the mileage that the Google cars have uh, covered in the US, they've got two... Oh, for the last couple of years, I think they've had two unmanned cars driving mm. around Google. Uh, they've covered some crazy, like, a couple of hundred thousand miles each of them over the time. And have been involved in two accidents in that time, and it was someone nudging into the Google car. Like yeah, not, was, yeah, they weren't at any fault at all. Like yeah. all of it's being filmed and everything, so they can see mm. it's just some other jerk off or whatever that's just crashed into their car. So mm. I'd I'd be keen to get towards uh, like driverless vehicle. Absolutely, man. I'd sit in one man. of them. You, you, w- maybe you wouldn't want to be fucking cruising there. around in the prototype when everybody else. No, was no, no, no you yeah. go buy you'd episode one. To, yeah. 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 You'd, you'd want them to have fucking worked work out, out the kinks. kinks. Yeah, yeah, worked out all the kinks. Getting that one with that built-in flashlight. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Imagine like a, yeah. that, man. Flashlight just, mounted to the just, wall. Just a full flashlight mounted into the glove box, <laughs> and you just like recline <laughs> your seat forward and just go and hammer and tongs. The Bachelor series. It's just a big dildo for the chicks and instead of just get rammed. Drop a big nut in the fucking in your your windscreen wiper wood. Just gets gets rid of it for you. (laughs) Be called Uber Private or something. Mate, we 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 laugh, but the real Uber X. Uber 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 X. Uber Triple X. <laughs> Anyone going to go see the new Triple X that's out, man? Vin Diesel fucking well, got that new sequel yeah. out. I like those no. those <laughs> shitty <laughs> shitty movies, bro. I, I, I know that I know that obviously they're not anything that's any ever going to win an Academy or an Oscar award, award or anything. But maybe um, this one, man. 
Mate, this this could be Vin Diesel's <laughs> yeah. big break. He's right? crowning moment. Step aside, Leo. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. But, um, man, I, I love those Fast and Furious, Triple uh, X style movies. They're all good. I did when I was a bit younger. I look at them now and even though it's a movie and it's Hollywood and shit like that, I'm looking at it going, oh, get the fuck so out cheesy. of yeah. here. Like, yeah, no, you fucking out you're fucking, who's this fucking guy? <laughs> 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 Had to take a, a six-hour bus ride in basically like a mini bus from, um, from one town to another in Colombia. And anybody who's been to Latin America will vouch for the fact that there's no seatbelts and fucking everybody drives like an absolute mm. maniac with the music full tilt. And stock, like, Colombian styles, there was fucking... The bus driver puts on Fast and the Furious, like, on the on the <laughs> bus screen <laughs> with his, like, subwoofer turned up so loud. So it's just like you're in a cinema that's tiny, just like... <laughs> 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 Like, and all this shit While we're ducking and weaving In and out of fucking traffic Along ah. these like Hectic sketchy roads And then all of a sudden We go to overtake This sewage truck Bang Fucking hit, in, hit into the side of him Like have our own accident And so we're sitting here In, in basically like the Sort of Post Prang chaos Like little sort of Bubble that goes on Where a chick's fallen Out of her chair And everybody's like We just fucking crash And meanwhile Fast and the Furious Is still like, <laughs> <laughs> like Some fucking like <laughs> Car flying <laughs> over Fucking <laughs> ten other cars It's just like Turn this fucking man. shit off We've <laughs> <laughs> got a sort of situation On our hands <laughs> Nah man They're racing <laughs> for slips <laughs> 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 Uh, no, apparently there's going to be three more of those. Or yeah, something. They're rounding well, it out to a God. ten or a dozen. Or is, the, is the Rock part of it now? Yeah, he's yeah, number he's six, a, man. He's, he's in number in. six, but fucking, he's in everything. Um, yeah. if there's a movie made these oh, days. The Rock, oh, oh, yeah. an action yeah. movie for sure. Yeah. He's the highest paid um, actor. working actor. Yeah, apparently. last year he's going to be in uh, Jumanji. Yes, he's doing yes. That would be and it would definitely have a lot to do with fucking how much that dude works. Like his his work. No one works. absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Hates a sixteen hour day. The Rock. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, exactly. What a legend! Mm. Oh, definitely. He's another dude that comes across as being uh, a real stand-up dude. Yeah. Like, I mean, w- wouldn't wouldn't be a cocksucker to meet in real life? There I don't was, think. There was like. a bloke um, <laughs> only recently over the Christmas break. He gave a shout out to a some of, one of these guys that plays in the AFL out here. Just fucking some twenty year old or whatever just reaches out, going, "Hey man, my um my brother's a huge fan. Fucking doing it tough at the moment with illness." So I think, yeah, like some sort of terminal illness or whatever. And The Rock goes on his own personal Instagram and gives him a shout out. Like, yeah, yeah no, yo, what's no, up? No, just want to give it, yeah, I know you're doing it tough, my brother, but yeah. fucking keep grinding, man. Yeah. We're all here fucking thinking of you. Merry Christmas. What that would oh. do to a person's spirits oh, and that sort of thing. Man. Yeah. And he doesn't have to do that. Like, exactly. How many, he would be inundated with things to Apparently, um... Bo Ryan, like uh, yeah. uh, uh, the for the NRL dude, is a, is a lot like His that. Homies with him, pretty much too with the Rock is, man. Is he yeah, really? Oh, they hung okay. out quite a lot. He's done here. a couple of interviews where the, yeah. the Rock remembers him from the time before, like because he's always doing crazy shit, like different challenges where it's like, oh, he has to fucking he makes himself eat like half a jar of Vegemite in in the interview in front of him and shit. So he's like he's pretty memorable. Like, <laughs> oh, old Bo it, Ryan, he, he's it, funny as fuck. Yeah, he is funny yeah. as fuck, man. He'd he'd be another person who'd. Who'd have a real good personality in real life, yeah. I think. That'd he, uh, just be real jovial and, and funny to be around. He, he had that, like we were talking before about celebrity status with yep. uh, us. He had a, uh, got in a bit of hot water with that yes. affair over the girl yeah, from the High, High Five. Five. I know yeah. it was all alleged, but yeah, uh, whether exactly. the smoke this fire with that sort of stuff. So yeah. but, we but ain't mad at you, Bo. She exactly. was hot as yeah. Bo. Yeah, she's always a little bit. Still is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the tricky part of it, you know, like as you look at so many dudes who, who really probably. Uh, incredibly upstanding individuals otherwise, yeah. but just a, a sucker for the poontang, yeah. you know, like Bill Clinton and oh. all that sort of stuff. Muhammad Apparently Ali. He, yeah. yeah, Ali was a, he was Ali. a coxman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Sure. <laughs> 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 I'm a coxman. I'm a coxman. Yeah, so it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily make you a horrible Tiger person, Woods. I suppose. Mm. But, yeah, we should, we should absolutely break down that fucking oh, main yeah. event. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, unbelievable, but, say? yeah, I, I, I think... What I said in the pod in the in the main like telecast was just it looked like a professional fighting an amateur. It, it looked was, like she hadn't fought a, a single day of sparring in the whole time she had been off. It was a straight up destruction. It mm. was to be picked apart in less than a minute after thirteen months off. Mm. There was zero evolution in her game at that point to I me. I can't believe she, she, was didn't, she didn't look to fucking grapple at all. No, like, no. I think she, she went out there to try and like prove a point with her boxing or something. She did at one stage though. She tried to after grapple she was, one After stage, she, was she was very was injured. Hurt. Yeah. Very injured. She should have fucking like, well, it's armchair opinions, backyard mm. philosophy, but 
I thought she would have shot for a takedown or tried to tie things up straight away, man. Mm. Amanda Nunez's fucking boxing is the real deal. She stood in, stood at the end of her punches as well, so it didn't look to circle or anything like that. Zero head movement off mm. the centre. And Amanda just hitting her with hard shots. It's yeah. like... Just busted her up. Edmund, Edmund in the corner, like, I've listened to the audio of that Yeah, what, now. Was, what was the controversy around that? Oh, no, nothing really, but just... He mentioned good job yeah, at, at some stage uh, in, his, in, the, in the first sort of, I guess, you know, a corner advice or whatever I suppose you call that, um, in the first 45 seconds. Yeah, pretty helter-skelter at that yeah, point. Yeah, pretty helter-skelter at that point, but, you know, that they... She dodged one right hand, yeah. like beautiful champ. Yeah, and, and that's it too. You might ne- you might need to have the context of what he said. Good job in t- in regards to because you're right. You know, like you use that example as you know head movement. She moves ahead, and it's like good job. You know, like yeah. sure she's getting fucked up. She's not doing a good job overall, but but was there some chat that um, was he calling out shit to Amanda after the fight or something like that? She said something. She sprayed him. Yeah, she sprayed him. Going yeah. look. Uh, she was a she's a grappler and her, her coach, is, who's a purely a boxing coach, has just fed her lies telling her that she could beat world champion women and stuff because Edmund's not an MMA coach. If you look at the MMA fighters that have gone to his gym, they have gone on fucking astronomical skids under yeah, him. Like his yeah. win-loss record is downright Dread, appalling, dreadful. really. Like not, yeah. to, not to throw him under the bus or anything, but... But it makes, sh- it makes you shit, wonder looking man. back at you're the... Shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you wonder looking back at her initial opponents through the UFC, like the exactly. Sarah McMahon's and things like that. How fucking bad were they? Yeah, it definitely. Sorry to throw the, the yeah. women's bantamweight on yeah. there. Ronda ran through those chicks. Yeah. And now the secret's out, and Amanda just came out, walked her down, beat her down. She doesn't like getting hit. Exactly. It's plain and simple. And, and it, it, it's just so almost like alarmingly apparent in, in hindsight when you go back and you do think of the historical mm. fights and, you know, where, where it's either all grappling or, you know, that they were pretty much like a deer in the headlights early on because they didn't they, they want were to almost be grappled. Scared. Yeah, you they know, were, like, yeah. I think they bought into the hype yeah, some of her competition that's too right. where now they'd be looking at it going, fuck, I should have just yeah, got after her. I should have exactly, got after her. Yeah. Well, but, um, but pretty much Beth Cohea, even though obviously she got knocked out and then everyone was raving about, jo- mm. you know, Ronda's improved boxing and how good her stand-up was and, and all that sort of stuff. It's like, no, she got in a fucking, like, in a, a quick scuffle in a phone booth and, like, yeah. landed the better shot. That's like, right. Yeah, walked her down. Same one, Kat Zingano charged her. She just grabbed a hold of the arm. Yeah, yeah. Can't, can't deny Ronda's armbar ability. That it's, it's as good as anyone in the game. Definitely. But well, yeah, geez, Holly Holm just exposed a few of those yeah. holes. And those holes were there again, if not worse. That was yeah. big. She had all that time off. And as, as you touched on, Chris, it didn't look like she had sparred a single round. No, no. It was just, just so stiff. It looked, so it looked like stiff. they threw you or, you or I in there against Fabian. Yeah. Yeah, Luke Rockhold and said go, and like, and that's exactly it was, what it would have been like, man. Is that that amateur versus professional? Of you could tell that after uh, Ronda had been hit with those first four or five, like you know she didn't want to be there anymore. You know she wished she was a mil- ten thousand miles away, sitting on a couch at home, but she knew that she had to be finished because she was sitting in front of you know people that have uh, or, you know arranged a, get, a gate that probably made five million bucks. You know, did, to sit did there. Ronda? Not do any media because she knew in her own head she hadn't put in the work. Maybe. Oh, she looked in great condition she to me. Did, she yeah, did. She, yeah. When she yeah. weighed Difference in and she was she, fit to she looked fucking yes. like she had been through a yeah. proper training camp yeah. and everything was dialed yeah. in. Yeah, but I'll looked go, in great I just shape, think yeah. I just yeah. like I'll, I'll for, go low for, carb for, and hit the kettlebells and still walk into an octagon and get my ass kicked. You know, like yeah, I mean, yeah. For, for mine, it was it was the strategy seemed surprised me that she was going to try and stand there and trade with mm, her. That yeah. that's what really surprised me. But I think it was a humane stoppage by. Uh, Herb, Herb Dean. Oh, he, he I thought it was a her. great stoppage. Yeah, he saved though, like she was on the end of a big right yeah, hand and was exactly. back into the fence. And it was when when he's waved it away, she's still stumbling there, just looking up. Exactly. Like, what, what, what's going on? Had she no, was just got a bell rung. so dazed. You know, had no no idea what was going on. She was not intelligently defending herself. Fair enough. She was still on her on her feet, mm. but all he was saving her from was that just that finishing move like Holly Holm put on her and, and just yeah. wearing that head kick, head kick which turns the lights that out, you know? Reel. No one needs to see that, although it's exciting. To Is see this the Amanda Nunez, 27 total strikes, Ronda Rousey, 7. Wow. And those seven would just be flailing. little short ones in close. Little flailing yeah. sh- short ones. Nothing although she substance. definitely, because it was he- helter-skelter there, she definitely tagged her with a couple. If you mm. if you watch it in, in the replay, like, you know, Amanda was obviously just smelled blood and was swarming yeah. her, you know, but... 27 landed shots, 
in 48 seconds. Yeah. That, to me, it's spells the end of the line. Yeah. Like you, you're not... Yeah. How do you come back? How do they market her so, from that again? So it's does that she? That bubble's burst, man. Does she? I mean, uh, uh, what do you think? Oh, I, th- I think she well and truly has to hang him up by yeah. now. I mean, how, how do you, one, come in and ask for $3 million show money after what's happened to you twice in a row? That star power took a bit of a blow after, the, after her first loss to home. But I think what people... Look at when Nate Diaz tapped out McGregor. He was... By the fucking 24 hours later, he's like, let's run this shit back. Same conditions, everything. I'm going to beat that motherfucker. Mm. I'm going to get him. Ronda went into hiding for six months. Didn't yeah. do any media. Where if she had to come out and said, hey, holy home, fuck, I've got some holes in my game. I, I know I need to work at some things. She made me a better fighter that night. Copped it on the chin. I think people would have respected that more. Instead, she's come in and said nothing and really said nothing after this mm. one as well. So yeah. I just don't... You couldn't possibly put her in a headliner, could you? No. Oh, especially not from a not from a... Like a mixed martial arts standpoint, anyway, you know, I think that it, absolutely, if you were if you were Conor McGregor and and you were imagining that, you know, that Floyd Mayweather lifestyle for your life one day or or whatever, and that was the part of the plan was to at least remain undefeated enough or you know long enough to the point where you were making huge fights, um, then yeah, he knew he needed to get that one back or whatever. But um, I think Ronda would have a her mindset would be totally different. She she'd have just this last year been you know. Do, doing this movie and getting paid for these endorsements and still making a million bucks a year, and she'd just be like, "Fuck this, getting punched in the face, bullshit," you know? Yeah. Like, and I think <clears throat> I don't know. Like, um, I think there's got to be something to be said of the difference between the male psychology and the female psychology when it comes to sport and sportsmanship. Like, I think my initial reaction to to watching some of the women's MMA was that it felt a lot more emotional than the than the men's MMA and 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 some of the fights were absolute brawls in comparison to watching a an Anderson Silva play in the octagon you know mm. what i mean and uh and Ronda Rousey was um basically the the epitome of that you know she she would take that grudge and that that fight like down into her deepest core yeah. to the point where she would be still so locked in that that she couldn't shake, you know, Misha Tate's hand after after a great fight, like, mm. and, and that yeah, sort of she won too. Yeah, yeah. Still, still didn't yeah. do it exactly. Like, exactly. So it was like we were talking about last last potty, I think, where you've got that certain type of personality and psychology that it takes to be an extreme competitive winner and and like you know the stories of uh michael jordan if you beat him at a at a game of pool he won't talk to you for for a few days and stuff like that and ronda is that absolute savage competitive to her to her absolute core so it's you know you can kind of understand like i i was actually i was sort of in two minds after the fight i was like is she gonna stay for a for like the post fight like a uh, loser speech and or is she going to walk because she normally always walks yep. and then she was hanging around for a little bit and i was like fuck maybe she's going to take the mic and and be gracious and and may, maybe you know like say say do a do a misha tate or whatever mm-hmm. but um no nah, she she bailed yeah. and then i think she made a statement saying that she wants she wants some time to herself and shit like that and, and i think her pr people and so to cut you off but like her pr people and all that sort of stuff would know who their person is ahead of time. So they would sort of, you know, they would know that, hey, okay, if if Rhonda is not is not good when she gets put on the spot with certain things and when she is especially not good is as after she's fucking had a bell rung. So, you know, like if, if, it, if you do lose, make sure you hoard her out of the cage because we don't want, you know, it's not going to be good for her brand, whatever was, she uh, has to say similar after Similar to this. what Rogan had to say too with Overeem where he's like, look, I'm done interviewing fighters after they've good just been point. knocked out. Exactly. Like, and, you, yeah, you... Uh, you're dead right. You might not have got a whole lot of sense out of Ronda in that in that very moment mm. right there. <laughs> it, Joe Rogan even used the uh, the terminology. He goes, "She gets got lit up like a Christmas tree." Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Fucking a, she did. Absolutely, oh, man. But yeah, I mean, was... Amanda is uh, a superstar in her own right yeah, now. I no, mean, there take is nothing away from her. The, she can basically run through anyone else at 35 oh, now. It in those feels rankings. like daylight second now, doesn't mm, it? Definitely. And it? And it's so funny because that's for the longest time what we were saying about Ronda Rousey was mm. like, where is a competitor? When is there going to be a competitor? Now all of a sudden it's that fucking, like we were talking about earlier, John Jones comes through. Now we've got yeah. the new wave of Cody Garbrandt and fucking 
Amanda Nunes comes through and 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 makes it look like okay, fuck, she retires two of the the top tier fucking yeah. women's MMA fighters in, reckon, in, in a row. I reckon Juliana Pena. I reckon that's an interesting fight, man. Definitely. I reckon. She, I, reckon I think that, she that should could, be next. Yeah, I reckon. I reckon that could absolutely. And looking you know, be looking back now, I I just always I always was one of the believers where I said Cyborg would light up Ronda Rousey, and it just looks like. So accurate now too, where people people at one point were comparing Ronda about being able to compete at male bantamweight, shit like that. Yeah, Imagine, against men. Like, and yeah, like oh. that, that was never in a million years going to happen. But people still speculated on it. Like, no, nah, I mean, she would hold, she would hang. Got hard. So, all right, chuck, away. chuck her in there with TJ. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See yeah. how she does. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Exactly. It's gonna yeah it'd be a crime scene. Absolutely. Amanda looked bi- a fair bit bigger than uh, than big, Ronda. Man. She yeah. is a big. Could, big could Amanda girl. fight one forty five? Yes, I'd say so. Oh, it, definitely. Oh, she, she definitely definitely could make that fucking She's, fight. They've, got, they've made Holly Holm versus Jermaine Deronda May for that one forty five pound title. If I'm if I'm Amanda, I'd the second Holly Holm gets her hands on that belt, you'd be calling her name out yeah. there to mm, become that yeah. simultaneous champion, become yeah. the, the female equivalent of a McGregor. Oh, and and, I, and I reckon, a, I reckon Amanda would, would give fucking Cyborg a hard time. She could, absolutely. Fucking hard. She's think, probably think, the, the yeah. toughest fight that she's got in MMA at definitely, the moment. Yeah. Definitely. Both big, both big and both... Well-rounded. Yeah, well-rounded and good on the feet too. So Yeah. Yeah, if that, if that Ronda Rousey, um, Amanda Nunez fight ever, I mean, sort of Ronda Rousey um, cyborg fight ever did go down, oh, Jesus, that would have been an absolute crime yeah, scene, definitely. you know, it against would be Ronda. Very, very similar to what, uh, exactly. what Amanda did. Yeah, I think yeah, she exactly. probably knocks her out cold. Though, cold, I yeah. So. Not hurts her badly early mm. and, and swarms her and, and finishes her off, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Unreal. What do we got next up? Uh, BJ Penn, I think. Mm. The return of the. And, and also, speaking of upcoming uh, combat events, I suppose something that's. That's probably more pertinent to us down here in Australia is who you got in the uh, in the mundane Danny Green fight coming up early next month. Has to be Green. Yeah, I, just think, the size, yeah. I think the size advantage is well and truly designed in his favour. If he yeah. wants to qu- correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's about eighty six or eighty nine that they've agreed to fight at. Where yeah, yeah, it's cr- cruiser times, weight or whatever yeah, it is. Oh, cr- yeah, cruiser's ninety one. I think it? they're a little okay. bit below that. Oh, gotcha. Because Green has fought at cruiser in, in recent times. That's right. He wasn't he when champion. He was champion he, there, he was, wasn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. He ended up getting beaten by Antonio Tarver at. Uh, that's when right. He came out and so he, out. he doesn't hold any straps at the moment. I don't does think he? so. No. no, not not anything of major cre- credibility at yeah. this point anyway. But uh, when when those two originally fought, it was super middleweight at seventy eight kilos. Seventy eight. Oh, that's so. Anthony light. now and later in his career, he's fought as low as sixty nine. He's been down at oh. that point recently. So if have to blow himself back up now to eighty six. When Danny can probably cut from that weight and come into the fight that night at ninety five. Yeah, you know what exactly. I mean? So he can come yeah. in. Lean, be a lean no, and a mean, no, a yeah. noticeable size difference between these guys. And yeah, I think uh, if, when Green catches him, it's yeah, it's yeah. Night, night for Chalk. Yeah, so. and and has Chalk been? He's he's been on losing a losing streak. I think, he, I think he's coming own, off a he? knockout loss. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, African American cat down there in Newcastle. It, it'll or still sell. It'll oh, still sell. Absolutely. All well, Aussies will end up bloody buying that. People buying still, that card. People I, still I guarantee clutch it. Into those fucking nine eleven comments of chocks. Like, <laughs> they're just waiting, just waiting for him to get his mouth shut. <laughs> they like, bought it on themselves like, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Choco baby. What was like, he thinking? Shoot, that? Yeah. Fuck. Wrong, wrong place, wrong yeah. time, Choco. Yeah, but, but yeah, I, I definitely think that uh, on the subject of mismatches, I, I'm an immense BJ Penn fan. But fuck, like that y- Yair Rodriguez fight is a tough one for him, just based on the length. Yair's sort of you know diversity in his striking, just how he how he switches shit up and how he links stuff together. I mean, he, he's a savage, but uh, I'm pulling for BJ hard, man. I'll, I'll never not back him in a fight. He's he's, he's my boy. 16, 10, and 2 is the Prodigy's record. Yeah, yeah. He's taken a lot of silly fights throughout his career, though. Which this is I, another one. No, and this is yeah. sort of, it, to a certain degree, it is. like um, De- Dennis Siever was the perfect marketable yes. fight for BJ. Agreed. I thought that was that was fair as yeah. fuck. Well, but this, this young kid here is, uh, there's an element to me of the matchmakers wanting to make a star out of this kid well, on and, the way up. And do you know what it, like, I guess has always been, what one of BJ's sort of, things that people love him for but also one of his biggest downfalls too is that because he has that just scrap sort of mentality that that you know like a conor mcgregor or or whoever else has that they're willing to take on anybody so that their idea of their ability almost does surpass their their ability a little bit so you do have you know bj penn going up to 170 to fight nate you know to fight 
Nick Diaz and, and all that sort of stuff and Rory McDonald and dudes that he knows he shouldn't be fighting, but he's just up there to prove a point, you know? So I, I really think that at least this one's at 45, but yeah, he, he just says yes. He doesn't pick his fights at all. I've seen plenty of Nick Diaz fights. I think Nick looked the best he ever has in his career against BJ. Yeah. He was so loose that night oh, and just boxed yeah. him up, beat BJ down. Beat but him down. Like you say, that's 25 pounds heavier than what he's competing at at this point too. Yeah, exactly. Listen just to an interview with uh, on 145 pound division, Gilbert Melendez is going to 45. Is he really? Mm. Oh. So he seems to think that that's... He can get down now that he's popped as well too. He might have yeah. to go the El Naturale route. Right. So. He's a stocky 55 he too, man. He's not small for that division yeah. in the slightest. Seems, seems to think that he can get down there and yeah. there's some fun fights there for him. But as long as he doesn't go the Anthony Pettis model and yes. it just depletes him too exactly. much. Exactly, yeah. And, that, and that's probably the tricky part is when you're at that stage where you know you can probably touch the number, but how good do you feel after you've touched that number? Definitely. You know, like, I mean, that that's... The big difference. I watched a, a Facebook video of um, I don't know which which fight it was, but Cyborg getting to fucking getting to one forty, and yes. um, yeah, it looked like story. fucking horrendous. Like for somebody who is just like the scariest looking fucking tough motherfucker you could ever meet in a back alley, to see them in tears of agony. Mm-hmm. With hot, with towels on you just to try and sweat out those last couple of pounds and just completely. God dip- is great, Chris. Oh. Like a Brazilian team crowding around her, just talking about God. It was it was deathbed Fucking stuff. Fucking intense, yeah. Wow. Death. And and, that's, I, and I wonder really, like man. in in reality, how close you actually are coming to death because it's like essentially. Uh, a hyper sped up version of dehydrating to death. Mm, exactly. Yeah, that's um, right. Female reproductive organs that can that and must be fucking totally. horrible. And, and the that. crazy thing is, is is you really are looking at a, a, a few more hours or you know a, a certain set amount of time period of time before that does become death because your body is is really that is the stage that it's at while it's preparing to die. So you know, like I mean, God, another six hours you wouldn't even be there. Mm. You know, mm. and then in. 12 hours, you have to go fucking fight for your life. Yeah. yeah. You're going to beat some ass. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But I yeah, I don't re- feel like it, eh? Read, read an article that, um, that she, where she was interviewed for some Brazilian sort of um, uh, combat sort of forum and, and they um, pretty much said that they took blood tests from her four days after the fight and it was like sort of like the consistency of glue like wouldn't even pull through, <laughs> through a needle. was just, and you know, like... Now ugh. she's... Uh, popped for some sort of performance enhancing thing on really? the band list. It'd have for to me, be that's some probably just, that's probably just to get her levels back. Oh, exactly. You know no what I mean? So I think she's no taken doubt. some sort of enhancer or whatever. That's just probably to get her balance back in yeah. check. But can't can't be good for you, but still crush crushes anything to do with the mm. the cyborg brand. Really, to to get popped for it a second time at this stage, and I don't know what state or whatever she got popped in the first time. But if if what was the second fight that she was in? Was that in that was in Brazil? Mm. Right, was, yeah. okay. And, um, Josh Barnett, pissed hot. Yeah, yeah he's, he's right, another one. So right, you solder right. her out there, they're getting them. Far out. Not a hell of a lot slips under the cracks these days, it seems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all that. And, and it seems to be too that, you know, back in the day, or when I say back in the day, a couple of years ago, you know, back when sort of even TRT was still around, people were only getting sort of popped night of the fight mm. you know like it was very it was sort of rare that someone was getting popped in camp because they didn't really tend to test in camp or anything like that it was always just as to what they turned up with on the you know in their mm. system on the night i'm keen to see how uh john jones comes back because i Ooh, yeah. was reading about his uh grappling match with henderson the other day jones weighed in at 238 oh shit so he's well he's and truly big, in the man. off season he's there. But See, uh, that, that's what to me is just so bullshit about why he'll, why he makes a, a big deal about, or you know, I'm not sure if he still does, but makes a big deal about going to heavyweight. You know, like I mean, GSP yeah. was the same. He'd be, he was always the fucking making the biggest deal of going to 85. He would and it's weigh. Like, like, Kane's weighed 238 for some of his fights. You that's know what I mean? Right, he, he was man. a champ for a while. Stipe isn't that much. Stipe no, would be 250 two, tops. 240s, yeah, exactly. So, 250s. I don't yeah. know, man. He's the same sort of frame as them, but exactly. just that size advantage oh. of 205. And, and so much. I don't know if you could say he's the same same frame. He, he is a long dude, but fuck those legs compared to JDS's yeah, legs sure, or something like that. They're definitely. bigger or just dudes. Being in, um, frames. Like six four sort yeah. of thing, you know what I mean? So even yeah. seeing um, OSP versus him, like OSP's a fucking big dude, he would, man. He would cut a lot of weight. Yeah, yeah. Big, you're right. Frame 
frame-wise, sure. I mean, he, he, if you look at his stats in terms of his reach and just his height and, yeah, and his weight, yeah, he probably looks about the same. But uh, I, just, I just think he, he could easily do it. Why, not, why don't you do it? Mm. You know, why don't you do it? This is, this is where your legacy's at, not in going back and, and getting the title off. Although, obviously, there is some, you know, legacy in getting the title back off DC. Mm. But do that Conor McGregor model, bro. Like, just go after the, those big fights, start calling out whoever's got the strap at heavyweight, you know, like, he could beat Stipe. Yeah. Absolutely. Every definitely. day of the week he could beat Stipe. You know, and I'm not saying he would, but, you know, he could definitely get it done. Who wins the 2017 NRL Grand Final? Ooh. No idea. It's, it's fucking such a bloody influx thing, man. Like, you can never never predict it, even when the season's going on. Just but as a smoky. Bronx you, Nation all the way. Yeah, me uh, too. Grand Final, uh, Cronulla will go through to a Grand Final again. Again? And, uh, I think they will play Canberra. All right, I'm... I'm Back in the Titans, I reckon. <laughs> Titans, <laughs> mate, they're improving. Don't, really? yeah, don't, yeah, don't sleep. So have they you got Hain? Sleep. Have they got Hain for the twenty seventeen? Yeah, yeah, he's doing a full preseason this time around, so he'll be vastly improved on what he was last year. He yeah. just came back underdone. Yeah, you heard it here first. Yeah. I called it. Titans. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, mate, you, you never know your luck. <laughs> Who's going to win the Australian Open, mate? Oh, fuck. <laughs> you can throw three names out there and they'll fucking win. Who's going to win the third round of the Scottish curling? <laughs> uh, <laughs> hand me that laptop. <laughs> <laughs> what about the uh, World Surfing League? Ooh, is Mick, Gabriel. Is, is Mick back this, Ooh, next year? This year? No, this I year? I don't know. I don't know. It, is, if Fanning is confirmed to be back, I'm sure he can probably just wildcard into events that he oh, wants to now. So. Would, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I, I how, how long does. do. How, oh, actually, Rip Curl at this stage would stick with him. Way more years. Oh, he's got than a life this. membership. Yeah, he's got a life membership. Yeah. Look at yeah. Kelly with Quicksilver. Yeah, he, he, he pulled the pin on them. Mm, so that's yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. He could still be with them if he wanted. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Medina, could. I think we'll get back to the uh, title 2017. Do Billabong still sponsor Oki? I say so. Why? He has a podcast. I'd say it'd be a lifetime. He's got a podcast now. Does he? They'd, yeah. no. they'd still the send him boardies whenever he wanted. He'd made him, made him enough money we at this point. We should do a collaboration with Oki. Yeah. yeah. He'd be a good one. Yeah. Oh, we'll feed him a few yeah. beers. Yeah. It'd be fun. We'll hitch up, on it. We'll him, hitch up on Instagram, yeah. Oki. So uh, shout out, brother. We, we love your work and we'd love to have you on. The Raging chat, chat, Bull. Chat surfing from back in the day. <laughs> it'd be, it'd that be cool. backhand. Oh, of man. Oh. One of the best, man. Fuck like, yeah. you know, that power old, surfing, yeah. That old sort of power f- surfing footage of, of him at sort of Bells Beach and J Bay and, mm, yeah, you know, Jay all, Bay all those really just down the line sort the of ways. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, you've still got a year till Pyeongchang, don't you? Yeah, 2018, March. 2018. Yeah. So the plan for this year, you're going uh, to North America in a month or so and yeah. a few more sort of uh, trials and different competitions. Yeah. So I've got world championships in Canada in February, but we've got a couple of races in um, France and Spain as well. So, okay. um, drug test? Fuck yeah. Sorry? Drug test? Drug test. Do yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah have you had sure. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Sort of, uh, being a part of Paralympic um, sport, it's all drug tested. Yeah. It's professional, yeah. whether you're with an able body or not. You know, it's a Canadian all the same. medicinal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hit that shit. Is that what you were hitting us up for our year? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just <laughs> kidding. Uh, just just, just don't know how, how, much, <laughs> how much use that urine would be to you. <laughs> <laughs> I've got this rubber dick here, man. They, they, <laughs> they call it a whizzer. <laughs> <laughs> the funny, the funny <laughs> thing is, oh, we got the dog, dogs going crazy in the background, <laughs> featuring. Is you uh, side of there here now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! This yeah, sh- no. shit's going live uh, straight, straight onto us. He but, didn't uh, inhale. He d- <laughs> 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 All righty. Well, on that note, folks, we might leave you for the first uh, first hit out for 2017. We'll plan to uh, to bring you plenty more content this year. Um, thanks again for for listening. Any uh, final words, Briss? What do we got next? We got a few UFC cards coming up, but we'll find some content for you and try and track down a few interviews this year as well. That's it. We'll stay hungry if you stay hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Peace out, peeps. Later.